it is London, 1858. Joyous crowds line the processional route to the Royal Chapel of St. James's, where a wedding is to be solemnized. Eighteen years earlier, standing on the same spot, Queen Victoria of England had married her consort, Prince Albert. Now, on the cold midwinter morning of January the 25th, 1858, her daughter, the beloved Princess Victoria, will marry Prince Frederick William, heir apparent to the Prussian throne. With their marriage, the royal houses will be linked. God bless the prince and bride. God keep their lands allied. England and Prussia are at peace and content. Fritz was 26, Vicky was 17. If only she were going to a happier court. She will be doing her duty. Now that should be a source of happiness. I know, my dearest. But it... It's a very dreadful moment for a mother. You must try to think of their future. She's well prepared for her task. Vicky has a good mind. Fritz will value her advice and love. I think it's beginning to snow. They should leave soon. I will be calm. You will be pleased with me, Albert. Some of the Prussians think the wedding should have been held over there. Ridiculous! That would have been absurd, to say the least of it. We are ready to leave, sir. Unnumber your letters, dear. Otherwise, it's most unsatisfactory. Victoria. Dear Mama, thank you for all your tenderness and love. Our son. Goodbye, my dearest child. Try to remember what I've told you. I treasure all your lessons in my heart. You must. You will find other liberal minds in Prussia. Should be a very stimulating experience. brief honeymoon at Windsor Castle, the young couple left Gravesend on February the 2nd, 1858, aboard the Victoria and Albert to cross a windswept channel for Germany. Vicky wrote to her father, the pain of parting from you yesterday was greater than I can describe. Berlin greeted Vicky with enthusiasm. Her reception was magnificent. Vicky and Fritz's marriage was to be a happy one. But the autocratic monarchy of Prussia, their overbearing militarism, and the stiff manners of the court were to come as a shock to the English princess. Her father's teaching, however, was to sustain her with a sense of mission to a strange land. This is the way to your bedroom. But this, this is the old palace where the crown prince's grandfather, King Frederick, died. And this is part of my suite? The present king will not have it changed. 
Your Highness's maids are already complaining. What is that? That must be the guards drilling. At night? They'll be going on night maneuvers. I expect the prince will often go with them. What a world have I come into? Dearest Mama, Fritz and I have signed your book as you wished. It is terribly cold here and strange. But I am well and will grow accustomed to new ways. Fritz is very kind and explains everything to me. The court here is very grand and brilliant. Yesterday we had our first family dinner. Fritz's royal father, of course, at the head of the table, and I between two of the worthy uncles. Did you hear that story? She was given this enormous meringue cake when she arrived. When she might be. In the tray. Uh, at Wittenberg. At Wittenberg. I put it on the seat. And old Field Marshal Wrangle joined them and sat in it. <laughs> <laughs> she and Wally there had to scrape it off his bottom. <laughs> Didn't you, Wally? Scrape it off his bottom. <laughs> uh, did you drive here? She in an open carriage? Oh, yes. No, you must have been cold. My heart is warm. And uh, when do you and Fritz move into your new palace, eh? Your real love nest? I don't know. The alterations seem to take a very long time. <laughs> Impatient, eh? In England, we would not have this delay. Uh, well, they're better over there, are How do you like Berlin? I like it well enough. But where is the public library? And is there no museum or art gallery? Berlin is not London, my dearest. No, here are all the palaces are barracks and the barracks palaces. In the poorer parts of the city, there are no pavements. And the people have to squeeze against the wall for their lives when the cavalry ride past. I've seen it, haven't I, Wally? Charles, what the devil is the matter with that girl? Well, she's too English. Mm. He should have married a Prussian like all his predecessors. Well, we're a small country. We need strong allies. Then there are blood ties. She thinks he's intelligent. <laughs> she may be intelligent. Mm, well, I hope not. Sorry. Cigar? Well, she'll learn. Your intelligent women never learn. I know. I married one. Still, she's healthy and pretty. She'll give you grandsons. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a night with her. <laughs> Fritz is lucky. He'll teach her a thing or two. Oh, she'll teach him. <laughs> mm. My son is too easily influenced. No, I don't want him surrounded by intellectuals and Democrats and Jews and so forth. Kings are created by God, not by clever people. Kings are created in bed. Mm. When we're in our new home, we shall have our desks side by side and work together as my parents do. I should like that. We will have an interesting life. We will entertain only enlightened people. Our home will be known as a center of good liberal thought. You must not go too fast, my love. People here are not accustomed to clever women. Here they think only of their homes and children. They must be exceedingly boring to their husbands then. Do the men only think of the army? It is the best in Europe. <laughs> and you're a good soldier. Everybody says so. I've been trained for it since I was ten. This horrible Prussian militarism is something Papa says should be curbed, and I agree with him. It is most unhealthy. It's very healthy. Well, if an officer enters a room here, the ladies rise and he's given the best seat. It would not happen in England. England. <laughs> England does not need an army. Why do you laugh at me? You cannot defend it. <laughs> Forgive me. Here we are not accustomed to discuss such things in the family. Well, we will talk freely about everything. And we will act together always. I hope so. As to having children, I hope I shan't disappoint you. I should not like to see you suffer, Vicky. After all, Mama says it is a natural process. I shall be very proud. 
To give birth to an immortal soul, what could be more wonderful? I must admit, dear Fritz, that what fills you with joy brings me sorrow and anxiety. For it is bound up with so much suffering and danger for the very young mother. You men are far too selfish. You have only the advantage in such a case. Whereas we women have to bear all the pain and suffering. Why was I not asked to come before? A message was sent. How long has she been in labor? 48 hours. Mm. There's nothing we can do to save either her or the child. Mm. Pulse is quite strong. How good to hear an English voice. Hey, she's done it. Oh. Congratulations, sir. You have a son and heir. Princess, he's sleeping. Devil, long time that it's taken. Interminable! Fritz Devoy, what is it? What is it? It's a boy! It's a boy! It's a recruit! A new recruit! <laughs> What about the arm? It is hanging from its socket. Oh, dear Wigner, let us simply pull the delivery. You have a good nurse. The English nurse, sent by Queen Victoria. <laughs> they should do very well. Poor left arm still hanging, sir. Yes, I know. The doctors say he must be put into a machine to hold his head straight. That may not cure it. Oh, yes, Fritz, it will soon be mended. It must be. Anyway, apart from that, he's healthy. And intelligent. There you are. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you're very tired, aren't you? My lovely boy. One day he will be king. Perhaps of all Germany. I hope so. Which of his names shall he be known by? Can it be Albert? No. He must be called after my father, William. He's a Hohenzollern. Sometimes I do not understand you. What do you not understand? Why are you so devoted to the forms of monarchy? Are you not? No. No, I'm more concerned with its responsibilities. To be used as a talent for good, for the advancement, advancement of, of Europe. Europe. Yes, my love, I know. Your dear papa often tells me so. Where's my pipe? Papa tells you because he sees you as the maker of a free and liberal Germany. Yes, but formally, under one king. Your father? He will never do it. He's too set in his ways. He's elderly, my love. Then we, you, must be prepared to take the lead. <laughs> take it away! Take them all away! And get out! Go, go, go! What is the matter, father? What? My ministers! seem unable to decide between supporting Parliament and supporting me. Parliament should advise them, and they you. I didn't get my throne from politicians. But God doesn't seem to speak so clearly as they do. 
What do they say? The army wants to extend the period of conscripted service from two years to three years, rightly. The parliament refuses to vote the money, and my ministers will not go against them. That is no great matter. It is a great matter. Well, you could find some compromise. I will not compromise my soldiers. I've been one all my life. I fought Napoleon. The real one, not this pleasant fellow. If God wills that I have a parliament, I'll suffer it. But I won't let it weaken my army. What is the opinion of the generals? Oh, they would send this parliament packing. You must not let them, Father. The army should support the Constitution. Don't you preach at me, my boy. I'm a simple man, but I know in my heart what is right for Prussia. And for Germany? No, Germany is not a nation. I am a Prussian. That is enough. It would not be enough for me. Mm. I don't know what to do. If only I had one strong minister. Can you not find one? Oh, yes, I know the man, but he's too violent. I don't know. God does not speak to me. Don't cry, Father. Listen. Listen, I have some news for you. Her Royal Highness is expecting another child, I hear. Well, she should be happy. She would be, were it not for her father, the English Prince Consort. What's he saying now? He's ill, Herr von Bismarck. <laughs> He's worn himself out, I think, trying to manage countries that are not his. Ours, for instance. I understand he's failing. Have you not heard? I do not follow affairs in England. Nor do I sniff around the court. Why do you hang around them, Moltke? I thought you were a soldier. I am the Crown Prince's aide. I cannot easily leave. Besides, it keeps me near the King. How's the King? Confused. He's gone off to Ems to drink sulphur, which he finds more efficacious than the advice of his ministers, who've become somewhat progressive. Well, Prussia is becoming full of liberals, huh? They'd be the death of us. I advised against it, but nobody listens to me. <laughs> they relieved me of my post at Frankfurt because I was too reactionary for them and rude to the Austrians. Mm. No, I am to go to Paris as ambassador. Oh, the anglo Coburgs are breeding again. <laughs> One fades and another pops out. One should beware of sentimental alliances, Moltke. English marriages, Austrian pacts, they are not the way. Prussia should stand proudly behind her ruler. And behind her ruler, the army should be the power. Generals are bad politicians. They have no vision, except along a gun sight. No, the king should send for me. He knows, he knows that, but he dare not. Since the upset of 48, kings are afraid to rule. When will you go to Paris? I may not go. I have the feeling I should stay in Berlin. Things there may change. You mean you will change them? The river of history runs as it will, my dear Moltke. If I put my hand into it, it's because I regard it as my duty. Not because I think I can alter its course. How ill is the English Prince Consort? They say he's dying. What was he ill with? Quarter chill. Opening a new barracks at Sandhurst. Yeah. Yeah. Not really a soldier. It should have been a monk. Or a teacher. So should his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like today? It is horrible as ever. But good for you. Go on. <laughs> uh, we were saying uh, Albert and Vicky ought to have been teachers. Uh, yeah. mm. No, Vicky wanted to go to England and comfort her mother, but I said no. No, your duty is to stay in Berlin and give birth to your child. Fritz will have to go to the funeral. That'll cost enough. 
Perhaps Fritz will be more your son again now. Yes, I thought of that. <laughs> he won't be able to preach now, will he? <laughs> Who? Albert, at the funeral. <laughs> Play the organ. <laughs> oh, how I miss him. Him whom I worshipped. His step. His beloved face. His dear, dear voice. I am but beginning life. The unerring judgment on which I built with so much confidence is gone. Where shall I look to for advice? I've just come from my father. Is he well? I've never seen him so cast down. Because of Papa? No, because of the army. Oh, the army. Why do you hate it so, my love? It's a weapon to oppress the people. Well, Parliament have again refused the military budget, so there is deadlock. Has the King asked your opinion? The King has offered me the throne. He's prepared to abdicate. He showed me a document. He said it only needs my signature. Then you must sign. How can I? You are so uncertain in your opinions. It is what you want, Fritz, isn't it? I want what you want, a democratic Prussia at the centre of a free Germany. Then make it. Here is your chance. I can't to... take the throne from my father. But he's offered it to you. Oh, and Solons do not abdicate. Oh, that is stupid pride. It is your duty. Who can your father turn to, if not to you? He will probably send for Bismarck. I would be a screen between your majesty and your subjects. And Parliament, Herr Bismarck? Perfectly simple. Ignore them. Just spend the taxes. They would cut off your head. And mine. In the opera place, beneath my windows. I would have died fighting in the cause of my king. And you? In affirming your divine right, what difference? Whether it's a scaffold or the battlefield? <laughs> I doubt if your colleagues would agree. As Minister President, I would have no colleagues, only subordinates. I would serve God through serving my king. But there'll still be a crown council. I shall wish Baron Stoff to remain his father. And I may as well go back and be a farmer. For God's sake, don't do that. I don't know what to do. Everyone is against me. Today I... I saw the Crown Prince. I drew this up. It's an instrument of... abdication. It's my last hope. <laughs> Oh, thank you. The point is whether we are to have royal government or the rule of the mob. I have no face in liberal public feeling. There's only one policy. Only outside Russia can we strengthen our position inside. But I must have control. The Bismarck, remember, I am your sovereign. I will always submit to your majesty's orders, even if I disagree with them. One day, you will be emperor of all Germany. I don't want to be emperor of Germany. But your son does. And who will guide him? <laughs> you can tear that up. Yes. <laughs> you are a red... Reactionary Bismarck, but you make his hands. I 
shall do my duty. It's God's affair to give me understanding. Well, you'd better have this. And it's extremely warm. In England, we should have the windows wide open on such a night. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't like Berlin and all this. You come from Schönhausen in East Prussia? That is right. What sort of a place is it? Mm, small, maize growing, full of autumn leaves now. In May, the bare bushes around the house turn into mountains of white blossom. Fond of nature? I miss my trees and my family. I'm engaged in making a little garden here for my children. The swing, seesaw, giant slides. Uh, your Royal Highness has a considerable family now. If you think three considerable. Whom you will bring up in the English manner. I hope I shall bring them up to be good Germans. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You still have time to study politics. I was taught to appreciate political matters. I would not consider myself a good wife else. You're ambitious, ma'am. For your husband. And for my country. Which? I am a Prussian now, Herr von Bismarck, and a deeply patriotic one. All the more so, I trust, for not being blind. I'm a patriot too, Your Royal Highness. I serve my king. He is the most ill-mannered, unrespectable, and unprincipled character. And now he has adjourned Parliament. That's outrageous. What do the opposition papers say about it? Nothing. My father has suppressed them. But that's illegal. Yes, I know. I told him so. What did he say? He was very angry. He has ordered me to say that I am in favor of censorship. But you will not. There is nothing I can do. This is Bismarck's arrangement. You must let the people know that you are not behind him. Oh, to oppose Bismarck now is to oppose the king. I was not consulted. Then say so. Oh, I've been invited to make a speech. Where? In Danzig. The mayor there is a good liberal. He has invited me. Then you must go. It will be very difficult. Oh, I've, I've, I've written some notes. Well, let me see. We'll be able to let everyone know that you're against the king's repressive measures. It will do no good. Do you not see? You must speak. You are the only one who can. But it must be stronger. Frauchen, please, do not interfere. We will work at it together. <sighs> My dear brave love, you should not be drawn into this. Oh, I enjoy a pitch battle exceedingly once it has started. I regret that I have come here at a time when dissension has arisen between His Majesty's government and the people's free press. When I learned about it, I was very greatly surprised. I knew nothing about the enactments which led up to it. I was not present. I took no part in the deliberations. He wants my throne! Youth is careless with words, sir. Don't choose between father and son. That's what this is. I'll have him removed from council and court. I'll relieve him of his command. I'll lock him up. Your Majesty. He's my only son, and he betrays me. He's only, if I may say so, a young man who is too fond of his appearances and his wife. Those ideas are not his. They come from Windsor. They all want me to die. Germany does. Mm. But your majesty shouldn't be seen to be too hard on his son. Better 
quietly exclude him from your confidence. Anything he learns gets back to London. You think so? It is plain. Oh. But don't dishonor him. He is your heir. Let him be a decoration and a soldier. That'll do no harm. <laughs> It's the princess, with all respect. Your majesty should put the gag and bridle on. <laughs> I used to burn her father's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> if I may advise you, sir, mm. forbid him to speak again, except to you. Keep them both out of the way, and I'll put some paid ears in their household, if you consent. I suppose I must. Deal gently with the young man, Absalom. I trust His Majesty was not too much moved. I did what I could. I asked my father to forgive the annoyance and pain I had caused him. I cannot take back the words I spoke. But in the future, I shall be silent. That would be best. The king now knows I'm an opponent of the government. I, too. On that understanding, I'm prepared to regard the matter as closed. You will no doubt wish to forgive and forget. I often forget, Your Highness, but I never forgive. We are to be pushed into the background. We must wait, Frau Hill. Your father will live for years. Forgive me, I wish him no harm. We must do what we can in other fields. We have our family and each other and our good home. Will he rides without stirrups? To help him gain his seat. Well, he'll never be able to. He's fallen. He's not hurt. Don't you think it's rather. It's the only way. His balance is so bad. If the poor arm can't be cured, he must learn to act as though he had two good ones. He's falling again. I think that's enough, don't you? No, Fritz. Well, he must learn to ride and ride well. In his position, it's essential. And he mustn't be pitied. I think my desk has been tampered with. By whom? I can't tell. It's too horrible. I can no longer write the truth for fear of my letters being opened. I'm not free, even in my private room. What can I do? And they're changing our servants. Yes, I know. But can you not stop it? No. I'm losing von Mulcter. He has been appointed Chief of General Staff. Vicious people no longer want to stay with us, Frauchen. He is Bismarck's man now. When I was a young man, I used to dream of a powerful and influential Prussia. Not a unified Germany? Ah, that's a liberal idea. Germany, united by a constitution under an elected parliament. I have no time for that. Humanitarian twaddle, wine or beer? Neither. But if we unite Germany under the Prussian army, they'll steal their thunder. The Austrians wouldn't let us. And make them. You want war? It's a clumsy method, but one tries every way. The most dangerous last. They have condescended to us long enough. There's no room for both of us in Germany. 
We would have no allies. Neither will they. I don't seek the collapse of Austria. All I want is to establish Prussian leadership in Germany so that the other states know which side their bread is buttered. Will Parliament agree? They won't be asked. Those questions will not be decided by speeches or resolutions of majorities, but by iron and blood. How certain can you be? Nothing in war is certain. I dislike war. You can't control it. But I'm God's soldier and must go where he wants. One quick victory in the field. I'll make the arrangements. Dear Mama, that clever madman, Bismarck, has attacked Austria without warning. The Austrian armies have been defeated, and Fritz's troops being victorious in three battles in three days are now at Königgrätz. What do you say to all this dreadful fighting? To me, this war can only be a crime. Vienna. No, Your Majesty. The army must march through it. And precipitate a general conflict? Why not? The commanders are prepared. And then they are fools. We will not make Prussia stronger by taking one yard of Austrian land. The Austrians have lost. And we won our prize. Now let's go home and bargain. I will not agree. Am I Your Majesty's Minister President or not? Let each tribe stay in its own lands. What would we gain by subduing Austria? Power. Power in Hungary and in the Balkans. Hungary is full of Catholic Magyars. Let them keep it. And the Balkans aren't worth the healthy bones of one single Pomeranian grenadier. Let the others fight their own battles. War should only be used for a policy worth its sacrifices. No one seen men dying on the battlefield. I have a lightly fight. Oh, don't cry, man. His tears are political. If you imagine they won't agree, I can no longer serve you. begin this war. If I can't end it, I may as well be dead. Come back, Miss Mark. Don't be a fool. For God's sake, man! Come back, Miss Mark. Come back, Miss Mark. Miss Mark, sit down and be reasonable. But your majesty! We're not listening to me! Listen to him, Father. I began this war for a political purpose. Now it's achieved, and everything else is nonsense. We have shown Europe our strength. Now we must use it. Wisely. We shall at least need 
the neutrality of Austria if ever we have to fight Russia or France. I agree with Count von Bismarck. You agree with In Bismarck. this case. I'm flattered. We will return to Berlin and negotiate. With strength. Enough blood has been shed. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, speaks with good sense and humanity. You're all against me. This is disgusting. Let us go home to our families. <laughs> this is uh, German champagne. Uh, it tastes like it, Your Majesty. Mm. Oh, I drink it for economy and from patriotism. Help yourself. I'm afraid my patriotism stops short of my stomach. French champagne is better. Uh, we could put ourselves in the way of acquiring some of it. I want no trouble with France. We shall not avoid it, Your Majesty. The French will not stand by and let us grow, now that we have beaten Austria. Will the French attack us? If they're provoked to, then. Well, we'll but don't be afraid. We have the industry, the will, the best army, and the biggest guns in Europe. The real power lies with us. May I like that for you, Herr Bismarck? No, Count Bismarck. I've made him a count now. Uh, can you? I'm sure I can. <laughs> no. Ah, mm. <laughs> there's a good boy, Willikins. I can ride now, too. And one day I shall be King of Prussia and Emperor of Germany and ride at the head of my troops. Oh, don't, don't be so restless. Your wobble the table is not very strong. I can. Now, I don't agree with you. We can never match France. We can if all Germany joins her force behind ours. And she will if the French attack us. And we shall win, Your Majesty, and be the unchallenged leaders of Europe. I want no part in it. There's no logic to it. Politics are not based on logic, sir. They are the capacity for choosing the most useful way. I want to reign here in peace. Why has Grandpa gone? Have you offended him? Oh, no. Elderly gentlemen sometimes have trouble with their blooders. How will you manage? My brother? To make war with France. Oh. <laughs> we... We shall name your cousin. Prince Leopold, heir to the Spanish throne. The Spaniards will be glad to have a Hohenzollern, but the French will object and demand us to withdraw him. When we refuse, they will attack. But that's a secret, huh? Mm. Ah. This is a draft of the telegram His Majesty would like sent to the French. Must be something in the water. His Majesty is too lenient. There's only one way to answer an ultimatum. And that is with another one. Now it may go to Paris. In the summer of 1870, Bismarck provoked France into attacking Prussia. As he had calculated, the German states put their forces under Prussian command. Thank you, Your Highness. Is it to be war again? I gather so. I've been talking with General von Moltke. I'm to command the Second Army. They flattered you. I do it for the honor of Germany. You have played into the hands of the Junker, my darling. You've become their pawn. 
Count Bismarck is uniting Germany against France. Count Bismarck is an international calamity. He is quite unscrupulous. He uses you, he discredits our friends. In time, he will corrupt Willie. Willie is a child. Even so. Bismarck regards us and England and France all as his enemies. Everything we do and say is reported by his spies. We're considered traitors, revolutionaries. I'm hated here, you know. Frau Schen, that is not so. Oh, Fritz, I came here with such high hopes, and I've achieved nothing. Nothing. We shall. Good may come out of evil. Never. Never. July the 15th, 1870. The French have declared war and are advancing towards Metz. We await them with sober confidence. given us our first victory. My army cutting through the French line at Wiesenburg, inflicting many casualties. August the 29th. Today, Father pinned the Iron Cross of the highest order on my tunic. It seems strange that I, who would rather gain recognition by works of peace, should win such blood-stained laurels. September the 1st. We have beaten the entire French army at Sedan. They've lost a hundred thousand men and their emperor. Nothing stands now between us and Paris. September the 20th. We have reached the outskirts of the French capital. But Paris does not give in. suffering terrible privations in the city. How will this end? I am appalled by the ruthlessness of our command, particularly Bismarck. He has made us great and powerful, but he has robbed us of our friends, of the sympathy of the world, and of our conscience. Shell them! I will not shell unarmed citizens, women and children. Paris is Sodom and Gomorrah, it's not Vienna. We shall reduce it by siege. It will take too long. I do not want the slaughter of France. Uh, because she is a friend of England, and the crown princess and her family forbid it. My wife is loyal. She is my wisest advisor. She's against us. That is not so. It's said in Berlin. I do not care what lies are told in Berlin. It is the generals. Here, that support me. They should all be hanged! I will tell them. Your Royal Highness, do you really want England, or perhaps Russia, to join against us? I don't give a fig for France. I don't want one inch of French soil, but I want it ended. There are more important things than a few French souls I have work to do in Berlin. Then I shall ask my father to have you sent there. Do? I'm only His Majesty's poor clerk. But if your Royal Highness takes his place, I hope you'll find servants as faithful as I am to your father. But I do not intend to be one of them. Yet? There is one matter of state in which we need each other. Uh oh. The unification of Germany. It is urgent that the German parliaments offer the imperial crown to my father. You think it will be like in England? Democratic and constitutional? It will never be. It will be as I wish it. But your royal highness is not king yet. And the king will not accept it. 
unless it's offered by the princess. However, as you are so anxious, we can arrange it together. How will you persuade them? I'll pay them. I will not be German emperor. All the princes beg you, sir. I will not change the crown of Prussia for a crown of filth. Parliament invites you, father. Do they expect me to pick up my crown from the gutter? I have mine from God. I'm an old man. You won't take advantage of me. His Majesty is like a horse. He takes fright at any unaccustomed object and grows obstinate if driven, but gradually gets used to it. Then you must coax him. There's no need. The crown prince will do it. He has emperor madness. As if it mattered who reigns, I will govern Germany.